Heidi, man, can you believe it? After the first round of the playoffs, did you think you'd be sitting there going, oh, go on, you eels, get up? Well, mate, uh, I honestly, I did. I, I know it was a bit of a hiccup the first round against Penrith in that first semi, but I think I once they put the sword to the Raiders, I, I wasn't really panicked about the Cowboys, even though it was a tight game, and, and here we are, you know, the, the big dance, you know, what we've all wanted to see for a long, long time, and... I think what makes it even more special over this way is that the fact it's you know it's another Western Sydney team in the Penrith Panthers. Well, yeah, close cousy neighbours for sure. Parramatta, if you just keep going west, people, you end up in Penrith eventually, don't you? Are these two teams the best two teams? I know you've been asked that question a lot, but are they? You know what? I think they are. Maybe the Eels maybe a little bit inconsistent this year, but I think I think they have been. You know, they've already knocked off Penrith twice this year, um, which no one else has been able to do. So I think. I think these two are the best teams. You know, I know the Sharkies ran second and the Cowboys are pretty good to run third, but I think these two deserve to be in the grand final together. Yeah, I mean, what do you read into those results? The first one was magnificent. The second one, there's no Nathan Cleary. Then, of course, you get to the first round of the playoffs and your lads just didn't turn up that day. I mean, what can we take from those three games into this one? I think it's just going to be a physical battle in the middle, definitely. Um, you know, the first game they played this season, you know, I've spoken to a couple of the big boys from from the Eels and said that was the hardest physical battle they've had for a long, long time in the middle of the in the middle of the pitch there. So, um, take a little bit out of the second game where Nathan Cleary was sent off early in the game, but I thought, you know, the Eels had the ascendancy early in that game anyway. I'm ready to play, and that first semi, you know, I'm I, I, I'm with, a bit with you, Martin. I think the, the Eels just have got to turn up and and play. They weren't ready for Nathan Cleary, who'd been out for a long time uh, with suspension. He just came out and kicked the heels to death. Heidi, that's fascinating, mate. I really like... See, I love listening to, to all of you guys talking about this, because that's just the mental game. They didn't turn up to play. I mean, how do you flick that switch? Good question, mate. Good question. That's that's the thing. That's the big thing for Brad Arthur, I think, this weekend. Um, he's got to have these boys prepped and ready to go as best they can. You know, they've I think last week there was a few distractions going into the Cowboys game, especially with Mitch Moses there with, you know, the I think it was the death of his grandmother and the birth of his new baby girl, um, which he missed. But, you know, he's got to have them all on and the boys can't afford this. Is it. This is, it's do or die here. There's no more second chances with this one. You know, they've, they've got to be focused, ready to go. Um, and that's, that's up to Brad Arthur to get them that way, I think. So the, when you when you when you talk about that, how much of it comes from within from the players? I mean, your experience at grand finals. Do you get together as as a group, just as the players, without anyone else around you? Do you talk about these things to motivate each other, or does it all just come internal? What is it? You know, I think it's a mixture of everything, mate. To be honest with you, you know, it's it's about you know having that group come together right near the end, even though you have been all season. But this is an extra special moment. Uh, there's going to be obviously a lot of input from your from your head coach and your assistant coaches. And from past experiences, I just think uh, I was overawed by the, the situation. In, I think probably in both in both grand finals that I'd been in, the 01 and the 09 one, where I think the occasion got a little bit better of me. Right. Um, and I think that was happened with a few of my teammates as well. You know, that well, you, you clam up and you, you tighten up and you, and you don't play that rugby league that got you there. And I think we were guilty about that in the past. So hopefully, you know, this time around, the boys can just relax you know, play the style of footy that they know they can play and enjoy the moment too. Enjoy the moment. Nathan Hindmarsh, 330 games for his beloved Eels and it's the Eels Penrith this weekend in the grand final. We had Gordon Tallis on a couple of months ago and I love talking to the big fellow and he said, he and he tells that story about the first grand final he was at. I think it was, was he playing for St George at that stage against Brisbane, I think it was, and he says that Tina Turner was performing and he said all he remembers is getting really distracted by that. And after that, he decided, he, you, know, you know, and he did. And he says he's quite, he felt, felt embarrassed about telling the story. But he said that, the, you know, by the time he got round to another grand final, he was so fortunate to get to one. All he did was sit in the dressing room. No distractions at all. Trying to keep that focus. Because it is a circus in the week beforehand and right up until kickoff, isn't it? It is, mate. It is. And I, I honestly think I, was, I probably was too focused. I would have liked a bit of a distraction. Um, to take my mind off the game and stop thinking about the game, because sometimes you can you can play the game in your head, you know, prior to the prior to actual kickoff, you know, over and over again, and that can that can exhaust you a little bit. Mm. So I would have I would have loved, you know, there was distractions obviously with your fanfare and all that type of stuff, and obviously the city of Parramatta, you know, the celebrations happening on there, but I would have liked to have got away from the game somehow and just forgotten about the game for a little bit, even if it was only for 24 hours and 
uh, just to get my just to rest my head a little bit, I think. Okay. So was it you know the difference the, <laughs> the difference I just said the difference between O one and O nine. Did you also go through that thing where you think, okay, we've made a grand final, I'm gonna make another one in my career and for most people it doesn't actually happen. So when you got the second chance well, that was that was, and I'd had a lot of a bit of joy playing semi-finals early in my career as well, like '98, '99, uh, 2000, and Grand Final 2001. So I thought this was going to come every second year, if you know what I mean. Yep. So I was kind of not blasé about it, definitely not. But um, I just thought this was going to be a regular occurrence, and I've got plenty of time. I'm still young. This is going to happen again. And then once you know '09, back into my career, and we'd lost that one. That that, that kind of really hit home because that was my chance. Well, that was. That's it. my chance, Nathan Kalis's chance, Luke Burt's chance. Oh, man. Because we're, we're, we're all coming off the back end of our career, just about ready to retire. So, it, and it was, um, uh, it was slim pickings at the club after that. So, that was that was the disappointing thing after that 09 grand final was, hey, boys, this looks like it's going to be it. And that was that's that's the upsetting bit. Does it, I mean, I, I don't know how to even ask this question, but is it, is it, worse losing before you get there or is it worse losing when you get there? I mean, because a lot of people say, oh, look, I, at least I made the final, at least I actually played in that game. Well, that, that's it. When I retired, I spoke to uh, Wayne Jr. Pierce, Bellman Great. Yeah, you know, know. He yep. played in a couple of grand finals, lost also. And he said to me, Heine, there's no point you know, dwelling on it. You look around, a lot of blokes will never even be in a grand final to, to feel that, what it feels like. So take that on board. You know, you've been in a grand final. You can say you've been in a grand final. You've, you've felt what it's like to, you know, you know, be in a grand final for your supporters and your, your, your town, your city, whoever, your family. You've done it. That's more you can say for a lot of other blokes who haven't been, unfortunate enough, haven't been able to do it. But I think it, it's definitely a lot harder to lose a grand final than it is to lose a semi-final. Definitely. Oh, look, you just, you know, you, your heart breaks for, you know, as soon as that final whistle goes. And look, I, I, even watching both semi finals last week, the, you know, as soon as the final whistle goes and you can see the look on the players' faces that they know that their season's ended. Wow. It just must feel like such an empty moment. I mean, as fans, we feel it as well. But as players, man, it just must be desperate. It, it, it is. It's, and I don't want to sound like a, a bit of a whinger here, but that's, that's what you put your all your cookies into, you know, trying to get to that point of the, your season. That's all the hard work in the pre season. That's all the, you know, the, the sweating, the, you know, the, you know, and a lot of people say, well, you know, I'll go out and do it, but it, it's, it's tough work to get to a grand final. Mm. It takes a lot of preparation, you know, a lot of sacrifice along the way. So it is, it's, it's when it, when it, when the full time siren goes and you haven't got that, <laughs> the trophy in your right. hands, it's a, it's a shitty feeling. And, it, <laughs> and mate, I'm 43 now, and I've been out of the game for over 10 years. It's it still haunts you. It does. And I, again, I don't want to sound like a sook or a winger, no, but no, no, you know, when you, when I left school and as a, as a uh, 17 year old to start full-time training with the Eels and that was my lifelong goal to, you know, hold up a trophy like Terry Lamb and Mal Meninga and, and the likes of those guys. It, um, yeah, it's, and, you, and you fall short. It, it, it stays with you for a long time. And those bastards never let you forget it, do they? Bastards. <laughs> Bastards, mate, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you know what the first thing is, <laughs> It's that? the bloody smart-ass kids. It's the smart-ass kids that watch the show. Right, who would never have right. Seen, who would never have seen, would never have seen me play because they're all about 10 years old. Yep. And they just go, show us your premiership. Oh, Rick. don't you, oh, dogs, mate. It's an exactly <laughs> dog. I blame you, Matty Johns. I blame you, Fletch. you got such a great sense of humour about it. Let's break it down. I mean, tactically, where do you, where do you attack the Panthers? Because, I'm just looking at a team that hasn't just made the grand final, Hundy. This is a team that for three years has been really consistent. Yeah. They've hardly lost a match in three years. Yeah, that's it. Oh, look, I, and it's hard to rattle Penrith. You know, you look at the weekend game against South Sydney where they were down 12 nil, and they just they went straight back into robot mode and fell into their you know, their spaces and their routines and what they had to do when each individual player did it to their best, even at 12 nil down. When they were still on, under, under attack, they just got the ball back and Fisher Harris started off the set with a powerful run and that's what they do. But for me, I think you've got to change that. You can't get into an arm wrestle with Penrith. I think it's got to be late offloads, different little kicks, all those sorts of things. And obviously the big key is, is pressuring pressuring Nathan Cleary with his kicking game because he, he, he terrorised uh, the Parramatta yep. you know, back line last in the first semi-final with his high kick. So definitely um, pressuring Nathan Cleary is going to go a long way. We've seen that this year, those spiral bombs, mate. I mean, it's a different way of kicking the ball, isn't it? 
Well, you know, yeah, it, it, well, it is. I know, I'm just, thank Christ I'm not a bloody <laughs> back. <laughs> Sitting at the end of it. That's all I, that's all, that's all I, I can see why well, my bloke goes to bed having nightmares. Yeah. You know, that's he's, he's developed this kick. You know, I, I know Joey Johns had it back in the day, but, you know, Nathan seems to have mastered it and he knows what he's doing. You know, Matty Burton from the Bulldogs also has a huge bomb, but it's, it's I think it's a little bit different to what Nathan can do with a, with a spiral bomb kind of floats away at you right at the end. So it makes it very difficult for his catches to catch it. But they just need to pressure him, you know, from marker on the inside there, from the outside, whatever. But, you know, pressure him enough not to spook him so he doesn't, you know, put a bit of footwork on and get behind the line. Nathan Highmarsh is with us. 3.30 games for the Eels. And we've got the grand final this weekend. <clears throat> All the success in your in your in your career. What is a what would a grand final mean? Being you know for Parramatta as a as a place you call it a city, and I'm just trying to get you know people to understand that that's how big Sydney is. It's a it's a whole lot of cities, right? So how for Parramatta as a yep. place for the people there, for the fans in that ground. We got a guy Andy Raymond who I know I know that you know who oh, yeah, yeah, yeah and, you know Andy man, yeah. yeah Andy Andy guests on our show every week and stuff like that. He's a Parramatta tragic as he calls himself and that. What would it be yeah. like for those people? It would mean the world, you know, especially for the new generations that weren't around in 1986, but they've read and seen and heard so much about the glorious 80s. You know, we've been so close so many times, minor premiers, a couple of times, you know, grand finalists. And these people out at Parramatta, these guys, they budget their finances at the start of the year so they can get memberships. That's, that's, that's the sort of people we get to the games who are diehard. They live for the games every weekend. They turn up, they travel by car, train, whatever, to get the to get to the games. They'll travel to you know, we had people from Parramatta drive to North Queensland yeah, last amazing. week just to watch the game. Amazing. So and it's been a long time, mate. Nineteen eighty six was the last grand final. It would mean the absolute world to these people out in Parramatta and, and everywhere else too that are Parramatta fans. We've got a large supporter base all over the country. Um, so it would mean the world to them, honestly it would. And they would they would celebrate for weeks out here. Yeah, you talk about that eighties run, eighty two, three, four, and then eighty six. It's amazing, isn't it? I just as soon as you say, you know say that, I just think of Sturlo and Kenny and those guys, and just say, I mean, it looks on their faces. I mean, what would it mean to those guys? Because all because they want to add other people to the club, don't they? Well, they are hundred percent, mate. And we're all a big family, you know. Whether you play one game for the Eels or you know two hundred and fifty games for the Eels, you, you're a part of this family, and you will be to the day you die. And that's the thing with you know being able to you know play for you know, an NRL club, you, you're not forgotten, you're always around and about. And it, honestly, it would mean the, the world to these guys as well, because they are, they're the, these guys are the fabric of the club. They're, you know, they're heroes of the club, they're legends of the club. And, you know, they want to add to that list as well, as much as they can. And, you know, hopefully the boys this weekend will be able to be added to that list of greats, like Sterlos and Kenny's and Bear O'Reilly and Edgy's and all those guys. So we're, you know, fingers crossed, it's going to be a tough one, but we're, we're very hopeful. Yeah, so, okay, and one more question on that before we wrap. I'm look, honestly, mate, I could talk to you forever about this. I love it. You don't sound enthusiastic. You don't share the same enthusiasm as I do. Well, I just, mate, on? I'm a Warriors fan, mate. I mean, you're talking about grand finals. I mean, I, you know, we don't even know what the hell the word means, final. You know, we don't even know what a top eight place bloody means. And I was well, about... Actually, actually, sorry, mate. I saw, Daniel, I saw Daniel Anderson the other day, actually. Good so dude. We had a bit, of a bit of a chuckle about uh, the grand finals he'd been in and... Because he was my SG ball coach in Parramatta, we made a grand final. Right, and then in, in, um, and also in '09, he was our coach that we made the grand final. So he has he's had as much luck as me, Ando. Yeah, well, look, I was Balmain first, and then of course they uh, they joined with West. I hated West so much, I patched over to the Warriors, mate. And so you know, they have no bloody success. I said, so that's why I said it. I said it. My head, my hands, like like you. But do you, do you find it amusing that there's a new generation that's grown up and they look at you as so? You're this guy on the telly. You're a TV star. You're a funny guy on the telly. Very very amusing to watch. You know, have a great relationship with Fletch and everything. Else. That's what they probably think you're Morecambe and Wise, mate. Do they know about you that you were such a great player? No, they don't. They think I was a poor defender who <laughs> didn't do too much and, <laughs> and couldn't win a grand final. Was slow, overweight. Yeah, so I don't have a, I don't have the best reputation with the younger generation, which is, you know, my children uh, for starters. So every now and then I'll try and say, listen, guys, there might be an old game on or something in old origin. I said, look, there's dad. And they said, yeah, no, it's not. You know, oh, oh, it really? is, oh. it's dad. And they go, yeah, bullshit, Dad, whatever, and then I walk well, off. So, yeah, yeah my, my kids love me. Yeah, they do. They couldn't give a shit, but they love me. It's still the greatest week in rugby league, isn't it, building up to this? It's fantastic, isn't it? 
It is. Like the out here, mate, in, in Oz, the weather's starting to change. We, we've obviously come into spring. It's warming up. You know, people are starting to mow their lawns. You smell the, the cut grass and the bit of the rain on the roads. It's a, it is a whole different feel out here. And it's a special week, especially, especially for those, you know, supporters and teams that are in it. And as I said, two Western Sydney teams, you know, Parramatta, which is a big city, and you've got Penrith, you know, half an hour down the road, which is, a you know, a big area as well. The Panthers out there, the foot of the mountains. It's going to be a big special day for both supporters. Already sold out. You know, you, you had to get in really early for this with, for this grand final. But, you know, good luck to those guys out there. They've got tickets, and they'll, hopefully they'll see a special day for, for either side, whoever it wins. Oh, thank you so much for so much time, mate. Brilliant talking to you again. I love it. No worries, mate. All good.